Welcome back, mitochondriacs, for another episode of Cancer as a Mitochondrial Metabolic Disease. You ever wondered if melatonin directly protects mitochondrial crystal shape and formation and subsequently super complex formation? How does peroxidation of cardiolipin relate to the inflammasome activation and apoptosis? Is melatonin considered an anti-inflammatory agent? I'm Dr. Casey Peebler, a board-certified internal medicine physician, a hospitalist in South Florida who is frankly fed up with the explosion of preventable disease and who is also passionate about mitochondrial medicine, cancer metabolism, and metabolic therapies. So let's dive into these important questions, see if we can get them answered for you. So the first paper that we're going to discuss today relates to melatonin, cardiolipin, reactive oxygen species, mitochondrial dysfunction, and mitochondrial supercomplex formation. So this paper is titled Melatonin Inhibits Cardiolipin Peroxidation in Mitochondria and prevents the mitochondrial permeability transition and cytochrome C release. And what it says here is that it is proposed that melatonin inhibits cardiolipin peroxidation in mitochondria, and this effect seems to be responsible for the protection afforded by this agent against the mitochondrial permeability transition pore, induction, and cytochrome C release. These are two potent activators of apoptosis or programmed cell death. So if we had excess release of cytochrome C, for example, we would have excess apoptosis, which would lead to excess cell death, which we could see as being problematic. Thus, manipulating the oxidation sensitivity of cardiolipin with melatonin may help control MTP and cytochrome C release events associated with cell death and thus being used for treatment of those disorders characterized by mitochondrial cardiolipin oxidation and calcium overload. And let's see if we can follow along on this diagram here. So we have aging and age-related disorders, and IR stands for ischemic reperfusion injuries for the heart and brain. And so we have an excess production of ROS and RNS, and those are going to have important effects at damaging mitochondria directly, but especially in damaging cardiolipin and producing alterations in the Krista formation and structure that will ultimately create defects in mitochondrial supercomplex formation, which then snowballs into further electron transport chain leakage of ROS and more mitochondrial dysfunction, leading to an overall cellular injury. And as we see here in the center portion of this graph, we have melatonin, which is directly mitigating excess ROS and RNS or oxidative stress, and it is directly protecting cardiolipin and preventing its oxidation or peroxidation, which kind of halts this vicious snowball from continuing. Pretty cool. So the next question we want to ask is, what is the relationship between cardiolipin peroxidation and inflammation or the NLRP3 inflammasome activation? And we can see that when cardiolipin is grossly peroxidized or oxidized, we're going to have an excess activation of this inflammasome, which is ultimately going to lead to a balance of pro-death or pro-apoptosis signals, which obviously is problematic. However, when melatonin is involved, and as you can see, it's 3-hydroxy, AFMK, AMK derivatives, when melatonin and its derivatives are involved, we see that there are protections of cardiolipin, and ultimately, there is a pro-survival situation and pro-survival balance in which there is no excess apoptosis and excess activation of inflammatory cascades. And this is just another way of looking at a similar situation. We have several different disease processes which lead to excess reactive oxygen species formation, which will ultimately damage and attack these electron transport chain proteins and the cardiolipin and lipoproteins that hold these proteins together and maintain crystal shape and formation. And when there's an absence of melatonin, we're going to have excess damage the super complexes will disassemble, which will lead to an excess of mitochondrial dysfunction. And this paper is titled Melatonin, Cardiolipin, and Mitochondrial Bioenergetics in Health and Disease. And what it's saying here is that melatonin is a naturally occurring compound with well-known antioxidant properties. Melatonin is ubiquitously distributed, and because of its small size and amphiphilic nature, it is able to reach easily all cellular and subcellular compartments. The highest intracellular melatonin concentrations are found in the mitochondria, raising the possibility of functional significance for this targeting with involvement in situ in mitochondrial activities. Mitochondria, the powerhouses of the cell, as we know, mitochondria are much more than the powerhouse of the cell, but we'll digress. 
are considered to be the most important cellular organelles to contribute to degenerative processes, mainly through restoration chain dysfunction and formation of reactive oxygen species, leading to damage to mitochondrial proteins, lipids, and DNA. Therefore, protecting mitochondria from oxidative damage could be an effective therapeutic strategy against cellular degenerative processes. Many of the beneficial effects of melatonin administration may depend on its effect on mitochondrial physiology. Cardiolipin, a phospholipid located at the level of the inner mitochondrial membrane, is known to be intimately involved in several mitochondrial bioenergetic processes, as well as mitochondrial dependent steps of apoptosis. Alteration to cardiolipin structure, content, and acyl chain composition have been associated with mitochondrial dysfunction in several tissues and several pathophysiologic situations and aging. Recently, Melatonin was reported to protect the mitochondria from oxidative damage by preventing cardiolipin oxidation, and this may explain, at least in part, the beneficial effect of this molecule in mitochondrial physiopathology. In this review, we discuss the role of melatonin in preventing mitochondrial dysfunction and disease. And because of our background understanding of mitochondrial heteroplasmy, our background understanding of the electron transport chain, mitochondrial crystal formation and shape, and some of the factors that are related to those important structural formations, we can now see the direct benefit of melatonin on these systems to help to prevent excess reactive oxygen species, which protects the mitochondrial genome, mitochondria as a whole, and maximizes the bioenergetics with the most effective electron flow and ATP production. So, one of the other questions that we had was, is melatonin considered an anti-inflammatory? And it really is an interesting question, and it really boils down to what is an anti-inflammatory? Well, generally, we think about three major things that are blocked when we think about an anti-inflammatory. We think about NF-kappa B, or nuclear factor kappa beta. We think about the cyclooxygenase systems, or the COX-1 and 2 enzymes. And we think about the LOX enzyme, or the lipooxygenase system. And kind of the new kid on the block is this idea of the inflammasome or this NLRP3 system. And as we can see here, melatonin provides a direct blockade to the activation of the inflammasome and direct blockade upon NF-kappa B nuclear translocation, which is going to regulate COX enzymes as well as many pro-inflammatory cytokines. So I think it's fair to say that melatonin is not only an anti-inflammatory, but a potent anti-inflammatory at that. And this paper is titled Melatonin as a Master Regulator of Cell Death and Inflammation, Molecular Mechanisms and Clinical Implications for Newborn Care. And it says here, we summarize molecular pathways in which melatonin is considered a master regulator with attention to cell death and inflammation mechanisms from basic translational and clinical points of view in the context of, in this case, in this paper, newborn care. But the mechanisms will translate to older human adults as well and having direct effects on these important molecular inflammatory cascades. So as we've talked about in the past, the formation of mitochondrial crista and the formation of the mitochondrial super complexes are critically important to maintain the bioenergetics and to mitigate the excess reactive oxygen and reactive nitrogen species, which can snowball into heteroplasmy and disease. And in this graphic, we see that melatonin through various mechanisms is going to protect cardiolipin it's very likely going to, through its nuclear signaling, increase cardiolipin content, and it's going to potentially directly affect the respirosome aside from its cardiolipin protecting mechanisms, which at least partly explains how melatonin improves mitochondrial function. One of the most important functions of melatonin is its effect on the antioxidant response elements, the clotho pathways, as well as the NRF2 pathways. And in this paper, we talk about the NRF2 pathway. This paper is titled the Keep One NRF2 Antioxidant Response Element Pathway, a review of its regulation by melatonin and the proteasome. And what essentially happens under normal physiologic conditions is that when there is no oxidative stress, essentially NRF2 is degraded by a proteasome or a, an enzyme that breaks down NRF2. However, when there is oxidative stress present, NRF2 is essentially stabilized and translocates to the nucleus where it activates the antioxidant response element or the ARE here, as well as many other things like transporters and detoxification enzymes, which we've talked about in the past. And what it's saying here is both melatonin and proteasome inhibitors upregulate antioxidant enzymes, including superoxide dismutase, glutathione peroxidase, hemoxygenase 1, and NADPH 
quinone, oxoreductase. Recent evidence suggests that the antioxidant actions of both melatonin and proteasome inhibitors involves the KEEP1 ARE, KEEP1 antioxidant response element pathway via the upregulation of NRF2. Melatonin and proteasome inhibitors suppress the degradation of NRF2 and also enhance its nuclear translocation. In the nucleus, NRF2 together with a cofactor stimulates the transcription of antioxidant enzymes, antitoxification enzymes. And what we're seeing here is that melatonin is essentially blocking the protease that was responsible for degrading NRF2, making it more able to translocate to the nucleus to upregulate these important and powerful antioxidant and detoxification enzymes. And this is more of a kind of real world example of how when we inject a very pro-inflammatory substance, LPS, lipopolysaccharide, it's going to have a profound inflammatory effect and an oxidative stress effect on our cellular systems. And when we are exposed to or we increase melatonin, it's going to mitigate or attenuate that damage due to excess inflammation and oxidative stress. And this paper is titled, Melatonin Suppresses LPS Induced Oxidative Stress in Dendritic Cells for Inflammatory Regulation via the NRF2 HO1 axis. Our findings showed that melatonin remarkably inhibited total nitric oxide synthase activity, nitric oxide production. Now you may be saying to yourself, why we wanna inhibit nitric oxide production? Well, that's a great question. Like most things, we need certain chemicals and when they're in excess, they can cause damage. And nitric oxide, believe it or not, is a signaling free radical, but when it's out of control, it can lead to damage and oxidative stress. So melatonin puts the brake on excess production of NO. And what it says here is that melatonin remarkably inhibited total nitric oxide synthase activity, nitric oxide production, intracellular reactive oxygen species levels, and lipid peroxidation. And that was detected via MDA or maldonaldehyde levels in both LPS induced murine alley model and LPS DCs, dendritic cells. Meanwhile, the reduced glutathione levels and glutathione ratios were recovered. In addition, antioxidant systems such as glutathione peroxidase, catalase, and superoxidase mutase were increased in all these processes. Moreover, melatonin also inhibited the LPS lipopolysaccharide induced secretions of IL-1 beta, IL-6, TGF beta, in vivo, and in vitro. Finally, we found that nuclear factor erythroid 2 related factor 2 NRF2 heme oxygenase 1 HO1 access was required in the inhibition of LPS induced oxidative stress by DCs by melatonin. Astounding. LPS is known to be one of the most potent signaling molecules activators of inflammation, and it is remarkably mitigated by melatonin. I think this is probably a good place to stop. We have covered a lot of ground here in terms of melatonin's amazing actions on mitochondrial cristiformation, cardiolipin, protection from oxidation, super complex formation, which maximizes ATP production, minimizes mitochondrial heteroplasmy, and its potent effects on oxidative stress through the NRF2 antioxidant response elements, as well as its direct effects on NF-kappa B and several pro-inflammatory cytokines. I hope you're starting to see, or hopefully continuing to see, melatonin's amazing benefit and why trying to make the case so strong that melatonin needs to be a critical part of your therapeutic and healing toolbox. The cool thing is, is that your body makes this amazing substance at nearly unlimited quantities when you put yourself into the right circumstances. Most notably, darkness and full spectrum sun, which we have discussed in prior videos. In the upcoming video, we're going to be talking about melatonin's amazing activity on mitochondrial dynamics and autophagy. If you like videos like this, please like, share, subscribe, and until next time.